Hello. This is going to be an odd kind of video for me because my channel is a woodworking channel and um, I stick pretty much to that. In fact, my thrust is to have information for not only a hobby woodworker trying to just make do with very meager means. That's really my passion, but I care about the, the small commercial woodworker too that's trying to scratch a buck out of it, maybe make a, make his living from it, as I do. But along with woodworking, my other great passion in life, uh, in, in least in terms of, of material things, if I'm going to be honest, is a passion for knives and sharpening knives. And I don't know why I can't explain it other than that my grandpa started giving me cases and bokers when I was eight years old and teaching me about knives and he liked pocket knives specifically case knives and boker knives but I thought I'd do a quick video on some of my favorite and this is just some of my favorite folding knives I'll do another video sometime on some fixed blade knives that I like but I thought I would do a uh, it won't be a quick video, but I'll do as quick as I can on some folding knives that I really like. Now, some of these are pretty new looking because when you have as many knives as I do, it's hard to wear any of them down because I'm, I'm switching off and, and, and carrying different ones and none of them get ridiculous hard use. I, don't, I do not abuse knives. Uh, my philosophy of use of a knife, period, is that it is a slicing tool and so I sharpen them to the utmost keen edge I, I make it into a slicing tool it is not a hacking tool it is not a uh, tool for chopping trees down or processing firewood um, that's just my my opinion and my philosophy of use for a knife so none of these have been abused some of them are old though this knife is 40 to 50 years old and it goes back in time but it is in fact one of my favorite all-time pocket pocket knives it's a case sodbuster senior and I carried the junior even in grade school you know I can remember going to school in fifth and sixth grade and I had a sodbuster junior in my pocket and I went to a, a private parochial school and nobody thought anything about that kind of stuff and I know we're in a different world today but, but this is in fact one of my favorite knives one of the reasons I don't carry it as much as I used to is it's not locking. And I've come to favor strongly a locking knife. But the case with its uh, sawbuster shape and carbon steel was a great, great knife. And it'll always be one of my favorites. This knife was carried for a long time, uh, not by me, but by my brother. And it, it is now one of my favorite woodworking knives as a marking and layout knife. Or woodworking but a lot of guys I said in one of my other videos a lot of guys in the trades carried these for a pocket knife the Stanley 10-049 it was a locking blade you pulled the lock back folded it throw it in the toolbox but they carried it and that was their that was their what we call today box knife but that was their uh, pocket knife he had some blade there it was replaceable blades and it is in fact a good knife you can resharpen it a little and then eventually change blades but um, these actually make good pocket knives, good whittling knives, and uh, I have uh, discovered it now through YouTube as a from from uh, Paul Sellers' channel. Never thought of it as a great layout and marking knife, and it is. It's one of my favorite. Um, but it is a good, in fact, folding pocket knife. My all-time favorite pocket knife. If you if you would go by sheer pocket time is is the Victor Knox Tinker and then of late the Super Tinker for almost the same size and weight with the Super Tinker you get scissors and so um, that's become of interest to me you get actually scissors you can actually use so the Super Tinker but the Tinker is almost the same blade. The Tinker does not have, uh, the Tinker has two, two blades like this. It has the, this is dangerous so I wouldn't advise you to do this, but has the can opener 
screwdriver, the super the tinker has the wire cutter and bottle opener and screwdriver, just as the super tinker. I'm gonna close some of these to make it safer. But the tinker does not have the scissors and it has the same blade. Um, the Tinker does not have the silly package carrier, which uh, I, I seldom use that, but there are uses for it. Um, the Tinker has the reamer, I believe, and I do use that from time to time. The Tinker has the Phillips blade, Phillips tip, which you know is great, and then the uh, tweezers and toothpick. So there's very little difference between Super Tinker and Tinker, but the main difference is the scissors. And I think if you're going to carry one, you might as well carry the one with the scissors. But the, So I, I would say uh, I started out with the Tinker being my favorite knife, but the Super Tinker took its place. Now I've sharpened this a lot. There's a lot of this blade gone. And these take an exquisitely sharp edge, but I sharpen them to a fine, I'm saying about 15 to 17 degrees. So. Uh, I sharpen them away and strop them away pretty quick. So, you know, in 10 years' time, if all I carried was this knife, this blade would be gone. Just like the old guys you see with case knives that have sharpened it all their life and, and the blade's almost gone. So there's a downside, but, but it's great steel, it's stainless, it's softer, it takes a good edge though, and it's a good cutter. And I'm telling you, I have carried the heck out of these knives, the Tinker and the Super Tinker, and they're great great knives uh, for under $30. This is a $25 knife that the Tinker you can get for $16 or $17. So that is a great knife and if you went by sheer pocket time my number one pocket knife. Um, now I have some new knives that are becoming rapid favorites of mine. One that I badmouth on Amazon that I actually like now is the Shenanigan. It's a CKRT, I'm sorry, CRKT, we call them crickets. It's a cricket knife, Ken Onion design, and it is a typical liner lock, fairly large blade. And the thing, the thing that's maybe bad about it is there is no steel liner in here. There's a partial steel liner on this side where the liner is, where the lock is. This is plastic on the other side. So uh, would, would I call this a super heavy duty knife? No. And I bad mouth it on Amazon, but honestly, it's a great everyday knife. And if you lose this knife, you're not gonna cry over it. And I got this on clearance at Lowe's and it takes a great edge. I, I never like, I, first of all, you might gather in time here that I hate serration, so I don't carry serrated knives. but this knife, I also hate recurve in a knife. That's a silly, useless thing to have in a knife, and it just makes it harder to sharpen. But the recurve in this is so gradual, it's not an issue to sharpen. So I, I overlook that, that little bit of recurve. And, and really, the more you sharpen, you lose belly up in here, and pretty soon there's not going to be any recurve there. Um, but it is a large blade. If I was to measure it, a lot of my knives are large blades, but we're talking about a three and a half inch cutting, cutting edge. So that's pretty big. In fact, I'm going to tell you that just in the last year or two, I've begun to fall away from liking that big of a blade. I'm actually going backwards to smaller blades again. I actually think that for an everyday carry knife, you do not want a big three and a half, four inch blade. This is another knife that I like a lot, AUS 8 steel. It's a rat knife. I think they call this the Rat 1 by Ontario Knife Company. It says Model 1. And it is a th total blade length of three and three eighths. It seems bigger than it actually is. It feels huge. They give you a big handle. 
What an awesome value knife this is though. I have not carried it a lot. Uh, as I said, I'm starting to fall away from larger blade knives. In fact, one of my really heavy carry knives is an Endura 4 Spyderco. It's a lock back. I can do it one handed. Once you get comfortable with the knife, even though your finger's here, you just know it's not going to fall there. That sounds uh, flimsy. You can put your finger out and stop it. And as you get comfortable with the knife, you realize what it's going to do based on uh, how it acts. There is a tightening screw um, to tighten it more. But I don't worry about this knife because I have it pretty tight and it, it's just not going to fling down and cut me. Um, is it a fast deployer like a lot of people say? Not for me. Some people have it so damn loose they just whip it out and they call it, you know, great fast deployment. I would not call that at all in this knife. I guess you could if you loosen that that much, but that's not how I, I, I use it as a work knife. And it's a huge knife. I mean, honestly, to carry this knife with three and a half inches of cutting length, uh, probably the Delica 4 would now be my new choice because honestly, I'm getting away from the bigger blades. There's a lot of times I like it, but more and more I realize I really don't need that. I got into the, that kick where I thought I liked it, but now I'm going backwards in it. So three inch would tend to be more of my norm. But this is a great, great knife, durable knife. Has It has steel liners in it. And this cheap plastic actually is indestructible. Um, these rivets look cheap. They have screws on the back. They look like rivets here. Uh, that looks cheap, but it, they're, they're not. Uh, they, they're solid. It's a halfway lock back, but it's solid. Um, it's a good knife. I, I, I like everything about the knife. It has VG10 steel, and I will say this, that is not what I thought it would be. This steel takes an exquisite sharp edge. And again, I do pretty fine grinds on my knives. Probably under 20 degrees is my norm because it's a slicing tool, it's not a hacking tool. And you get less effort in slicing when the knife has the sharpness. And you can get the sharpness when you have the finer grind and you can afford to do the finer grind with better steels. AUS 8 and up. VG10 is supposed to be sort of a sub-premium or premium steel. Well, what I found, it takes an exquisite edge. I haven't had any issues with corrosion, but I, I use a knife and work with it too much to ever let it rust on me. But nevertheless, haven't had any corrosion, and it takes an exquisite, beautiful edge, but I have found this steel folds a little bit. So maybe I'm being ambitious trying to do a 17 or 18 degree grind on this when the steel's not up to it. You know, maybe maybe I should be thinking 22 degrees on this. But I love the knife. I, I have nothing bad to say about it. I love the whole, if you're slicing food in the kitchen or something, or at a campsite, there's no thumb stud in the way. I love that. And I love the, I love this knife. I think the Delica 4 now with my new philosophy of, of length would maybe be a better knife. So that covers those. Uh, here's another knife that was a gift. I hate serrations, but these are good serrations. They do cut and I don't have too much trouble sharpening. This is a Benchmade. It's a Griptilian. Has 154cm stainless, which is a pre more or less premium stainless. Blade length at three and an eighth, but it doesn't feel so huge to me. This is probably on the large end of what I would carry now, but it doesn't not feel too bad to me. Thumb studs are okay. I've come to like a non-thumb stud uh, deal better, like a flipper or a, a spider co, but it's a good, solid, this feels cheap and plasticky, but it's indestructible. Good thumb ramp with grip. The axis lock is a good lock. You can open it one-handed, lock it. I'm not real good at it, but you can lock it. You can shut it one-handed. So there's some pluses there. Um, good work knife. If you cut a lot of synthetic materials, you might like the serrations. I'd rather have the knife non-serrated, but it was a gift and I do love the knife. And it's one, it's one of my favorites. Okay, this is a cheapie. This is a Colt knife from uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They own the Colt knife brand. So when you get warranty claim, it's right there at that store. 
this is a fantastic value knife. I mean, for a non-assisted knife, watch this. It just goes. And it does not have slop in it. It locks up very, very so as solid as you can get. This is some kind of a bronze bushing or something in there. And deep carry pocket clip, good spear point blade, you know, dropping pointy piercing blade, D2 steel in this particular knife and G10 scales. Tremendous value knife for under well under $20, $18 I think. And I bought one of these two or three years ago. I was there last summer and bought another one as a gift. Brought it home and I was disappointed to find that the new one I bought, they had cheapened this knife. They had done a distal taper here which thins it out. The steel in the blade was thinner even though it was D2. The blade shape was essentially the same, the length and everything. It looked as good, but it was not as good. I had to take the clip off, fiddle with the screw to get this action right, and never did get it like this. And then with the solid lockup. There's very little play in that. Very little slop in that. As loose it is, as it is. So I was disappointed, and I can only conclude they've cheapened this knife. So would I recommend you go buy one of these now? I would say no unless you look at it really careful in the store if you're at uh, Pigeon Fort, Sevierville, Tennessee. Look at it in the store and you decide. I know from three years ago, man, I, I've never seen a value knife as nice as this. And the steel, uh, it's not a miracle steel. D2 takes a good edge though. If you know how to put a good edge on a, on a knife, D2 gives you a really, really good edge and 20 degree or so, 19, 18 degree is no problem for this steel and it holds it. The old, the old joke about D2 was it takes a rotten edge and then holds it forever and I don't find that to be true. It holds the edge but it's, it, it's not hard to get a good edge on D2 and this is a cheap knife so if you had a premium knife with D2 in it I wouldn't be afraid at all. It's just a carbon steel. It's going to rust like crazy if you don't take care of it. Okay, uh, another knife Here's an oldie going way back. This one's like new because I don't carry it. I've saved this one. I had two of these. This is an LB7, original shred, made in USA. They make the knife now. Of course, it's a Chinese company, but um, Taylor Brands or something owns it. And I don't know the conglomeration that it is or the story corporately, but they make the knife. It looks pretty good. Um, is it the same as a US shred LB7? I doubt it. Classic, classic knife. I love it. Uh, it's kind of like the Buck 110 and, and uh, Buck Ranger and that. Classic knives, full lock back. Uh, it'd be hard for me not to put this on the table as one of my favorite folding knives, even though I don't carry it. This, this mode of carry is out of style now. Uh, it may come back because people think that's your phone until they see you have a phone and then they wonder what the heck is this. And it, 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 and the, stupid political correctness we have today uh, I don't know if I would carry this like this I'd rather have a little more discreetness here's one of my recent tries that is quickly becoming a favorite the Kershaw stainless steel Volt it's the Volt SS in a frame lock stainless love 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 this knife it's, it's spring assist flipper love everything about this knife the only complaint, if I'm going to make one, is that it's heavy. It's way heavier than a backpacker is going to want or something. But what a solid, everyday, and under $30 knife. You know, I got it under $30. You probably, you probably at most would pay $35 for this knife. An awesome, awesome knife. Gives you a few options on the placement of the pocket clip. But it, I, I wouldn't call it a deep carry clip, but it, it's just a phenomenal value. Kershaw has really caught my attention for value knives. Of course my battery died, but I was about to say this uh, Volt SS represents some of the best value in the whole Kershaw line, which it, itself is one big value-packed line of knives. Now this is uh, Chinese, says China, and they not all of them are. Um, 
and I think the steel, if I'm not mistaken, it's 8CR 13MOV, which um, I don't know a lot about it, but I, I checked the chemistry of that steel. And do you know that 8CR 13MOV is almost the same exact metallurgy uh, chem chemistry as AUS 8 steel? Now, that doesn't mean that much other than I don't think I've ever had a bad knife with AUS 8. I'm, I don't think I've ever had a bad experience with AUS 8 or 8A steel. I have had bad experiences with 8CR13 MOV. And I think it has to do with the handling of the steel, the processing of it, maybe, maybe the heat treat of it. And for whatever reason, Kershaw does a great job with it because all the knives that I have of theirs that have that steel just do fantastic. Um, I mean, we all wish, in America, we all wish every knife was made in the U.S. We all wish that. And, and it's, just not, it's just not reality uh, of the way things are. But um, it's a very high-value knife. Um, their whole line represents a lot of value. And uh, there's something for everybody in their stuff. And if you're looking for a flipper, uh, Kershaw, you, you just can't. I, I think they've probably perfected it. Um, they just know how to do it. And I, I'm not hung up on spring assist. They call it speed safe. Um, in fact, I worry about it on some knives. Is the knife going to open on me in my pocket? Because I've seen knockoff knives do it. Knockoff Chinese knives that that start coming to open in your in your pants pocket, and that is not acceptable. So, you know, I'd probably rather this knife not be speed safe. But the lockup's tremendously solid. There's a ball bearing in this frame here, and it, it just is smooth. And it does has I've carried it a good bit now, and it has not. Two things I've noticed. It has not ever opened in my pocket, and you can't even tell that I've carried it, and I've carried it a good bit. So that's starting to tell me that the weight, you pay, pay a price in the weight, but man, the stainless uh, frame and scale just don't show the wear. You know, maybe in time it will, I don't, I don't know. Uh, okay, this is a weird knife, Camelus, U.S. company that from some mysterious period after 2003, changed hands, reorganized, reopened. Some of their knives are still U.S. made. A bunch of them are Chinese made. And I approached it kind of with a, a slant. You know, I looked kind of with a jaundiced eye at it like uh, I did at Schrade and the others. But I like Camelus knives in what I'm seeing. This is like a, I forget the name of this knife. It's a camp knife. Um, I forget the exact name of this knife, but I liked it because it took me back to the Boy Scout days with this Boy Scout blade, classic blade. It says on it, Camelus Titanium Bonded, and they seem to have a good process for that. It's a heavy knife, steel frame, you know, steel scales. Um, it's just, it's just nostalgic, but I like the knife. The only thing that's a little odd to me is it feels like a left hand open because I, I would expect to come here and open the knife as a right hander. And as a right hander, it feels odd to open the knife this way because then the blade's facing back at me and I expect to open it this way and even though the blade's also facing back at me, somehow it feels safer. I guess just because I'm not used to it, because I'm, I'm reaching over. So I call it a left-handed knife, because you, you really are tempted to just grab it left-handed and open it. That I find weird. But I'll tell you one of the reasons I bought this knife. Not just the nostalgia, the blade shape and everything. Right there it says 12C27N. So that means it's got Sandvik stainless in it. And I always perk up when I see that, because I like that steel. I've had good... Good results with that steel. The little lanyard I put on there, 
Um, I, if I'm going to have a, a pocket carry knife now, I like something I can stick in my pocket, have this dangling out, and grab it and get it quick. And I've not seen this on too many other knives. This is an old, old style. I think that uh, you go back in time to the military or somewhere, somebody made this knife, K-Bar, somebody. And I think Ontario Knife Company has a version of this that's a military type knife. But it's got the uh, can opener. It's got a bottle opener and screwdriver. And it's got a reamer. So if you've got to pierce leather, sew something in a hurry, uh, carve out a hole in something, guys who like to do camping and like to make their own uh, bow drill fire setup, this might be good for drilling that hole. I don't know what, but I like the knife. And actually, in, in use carrying it, I like it. This is stiff. I'm hoping it, it'll loosen up. But uh, uh, super heavy, so that's probably, again, uh, a downside for me. Uh, I want to get all I can for the weight though, and this is maybe, I would say, maybe worth it. Is, is this probably got more to it than this? Yeah, I mean, in less weight. And I know this knife, I know it performs, I know how to use this knife, I know what I can and can't do with this knife, and I've had six of these and I love them. But this, this is winning me over. I like this knife, and uh, Camelus. Again, with the mystery corporation deal, I, I don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, all I know is they're turning out some quality products. And I'll show you another Camelus in a minute. Okay, here is a super high value knife. I love this knife. It's the Buck. I think, now I've forgotten the name. I should have wrote it, wrote it down. It, the number on it is, it's a U.S. made knife, 845. I think they call this the Pro Force or Pro Vantage, Pro Force, I forget the name now, and I should have wrote it down for you. All I know is to tell you, look in the $40 range for Buck Knife, number 845, it's US made, they offer some different scale colors, black, khaki, and uh, army green. It's a big belly blade, a big thin blade, hollow ground. And I'm not a huge fan of hollow grinding. However, this knife, because of the geometry of this blade, takes, I mean to tell you, an exquisitely sharp edge. And I did not get the premium steel in this. And you can get S30V in it, I believe, for like either 79 or 99 bucks. And I'd say it would be worth it because when you get so thin and you're going to do a thin grind like I prefer, um, that's when the premium steels might pay off for you. Um, otherwise, they're not really worth having. If you're going to do a tiny thin grind uh, on a premium steel, that might pay off. But if you're going to do a fat grind on a premium steel, why bother? You know, why, well, if you're going to do a fat grind, then then do it on 420HC, which is you know buck the steel in this knife. Bucks, it's Bucks proprietary proprietary 420 HC and whatever they do they do it right because the steel takes a great edge and it's pretty stubborn about letting go of it in proportion to how easy easy it sharpens so to me it's one of the best stainlesses on the market I love it I, 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 I like this Sandvik steel in this knife for those same reasons but man, Buck's got it right with their 428C. I'm sure there are, there are horror stories about it. Or, you know, there's exceptions to every rule when you sell millions and millions of knives. But I'm telling you, this is a great value knife. And guys, if you're out to, to uh, bash Chinese knives and you're saying, buy American, buy American, and you don't own this knife, then you need to shut up because every American that wants to buy U.S. products and doesn't own this knife is... is is being silly because right here, here's a great product at 40 bucks. And super solid lockup, good handle, good ergonomics, flat, it carries nice, it's not overly heavy, no thumb stud, which meets my new uh, list of what I desire in a knife, I, their own hole style, which works good, lock solid, center, deep pocket carry that you could reverse to the other side. So you got two options there. 
it's just a real winner in my opinion I carry it all the time uh, you know I don't know that I'm a big fan of a wide belly blade like that a real wide blade it's a great slicer though and it just feels good and it sure does take a beautiful edge so you know could I do with a thinner knife like the griptilian sure you know if you if you wanted to uh, analyze the blade geometry and shape a little bit more could this knife be done uh, with less dimension to it yeah it could and I might like it even more but I'm telling you I think this is a winner and I like it I carry it a, a good bit okay here's another interesting value I made this case I just sewed it out of upholstery leather because this knife has no does not offer a pocket clip and the knife is made by Martini which is a company in Finland and it has a classic Scandi grind classic grind it has a detent if you notice it stopped there which is interesting because when you shut it it kind of wants to grab there and that's a good safety feature but it's a thumb stud opens there's no uh, annoyance with the detent but you you realize it's there but opening it there's no annoyance to it but I, I do notice a slight benefit in having it and shutting it reversible thumb stud you could take the thumb stud off I don't know how you'd grab the knife to open it very well without it no pocket clip I wish it did have a clip some kind of good hardware here I don't know what it is and there's like nylon bushings in there they work good the knife's, knife's tight has aluminum aluminum scales open back I just liked it you know for a $28 knife I like the quality the fit and finish was impeccable out of the box the blade scratched now because I have sharpened it Scandi, true scanty grind you just sharpen it straight simple bevel good knife thick steel campers guys that want to beat on a knife maybe this is the choice for you solid lockup and if you love that scandy shape this has got it so classic scanty knife put in a modern package pocket knife probably meets European some of the European regulations about various things although it locks so I don't I don't know all those rules but I just know I like the knife um, it's it got a place now I am gravitating to smaller blades so here's a camelus and man I didn't write this name down again but um, it's only one like it it got a lot of premium features in a non premium premium price forty dollar price thirty nine ninety nine titanium nitride coating VG10 steel and by the way this steel I was talking about VG10 with Spyderco this VG10 does better than Spyderco's VG10 at least in these two knives and this is the real deal from Seki Japan their VG10 steel made in Seki City Japan so how can that be US knife US company made in Japan made in Seki City I don't know if they assemble the rest of it in Colorado or what I'm just telling the VG10 steel as good as it is in this knife this one's better maybe the 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 Tainai coating I don't know this performs better it's a fat little blade thumb studs um, not necessarily deep pocket carry no options on the carry you get what you get G10 scales though real nice stainless liners stainless li liner lock solid lock about the only criticism there is not much there to get your finger on and it's stiff but boy does it lock solid I call it a gentleman's knife because it, it kind of is and, and, and you know a blade you're looking at a two and three quarter inch cutting length two and five eighths cutting length on this blade so uh, this martini I didn't give you that and I should have that cutting length was pretty large actually three and a sixteenth maybe three inches to here so that falls within my new length guidelines that I like this one uh, I didn't measure for you either they make different sizes of this knife so you have other options 
I think this is the biggest one though, three and an eighth to the cutting edge. Um, love this knife. Uh, this one I'll put away. This one, two and three quarters or thereabouts, five eighths. Stainless bolsters and a stainless back with detailing. And you just don't see that in a value knife, $40, $39 knife. Uh, it is Chinese made. Um, love this knife. A lot of the Camelus knives, their value knives, you if you look close, they're AUS 8 steel and they do a nice job with it from what I've, from what I've seen so far. I also like knives with a lantern hole in case I ever want to do that. That's a nice thing. You know, good knives do that. A lot of knives don't do that though. You know, this knife has it. A lot of your better knives have that and if you look for it, it's there. And when it isn't there, it's a little disappointing. Even the shenanigan has it. Shena shenanigan's nice because it's lightweight. Okay, another value knife. Well, first let me show you this. This was a gift. The swindle. Cricket swindle. Feels weird because the way you would expect it to open, it's actually curved the opposite way. And it's a Ken Onion design. I would call this, uh, uh, kind of like this, I would call it a gents knife. It's uh, very slim, it's very sturdy knife. It's got some thickness there, but comes to a real pointy point, like a little toad sticker. It's rounded. I love that softness. I call it a gents knife. Takes a wicked sharp edge. And again, I think it's just their, their proprietary 8CR13 MOV. I do not think it's anything special in this steel. It actually is not stamped on there what the steel is. And if I recall this, they, they have other models of the swindle too. They have costlier ones. Most of those knives, when you get into the ripple and all that, it has to do with the scales being more premium scales. But this is, this is steel scales, a brushed stainless, I think. And it's a frame lock. It locks solid. This little pocket clip thing is the strangest, weirdest thing, and it doesn't carry well. It flips around. You can hook it on your poppet, pocket, but it, it just moves and flips, and it's, it's silly and stupid, and yet I probably wouldn't not want it, but I, I can't say that I like it either. But uh, it it's fascinates me. It's better to just slip the, the knife in your pocket, honestly, if you look at how this hangs up and isn't doing you any good. But it flips out beautiful. I think it has that ball bearing uh, glide in there that they do on some of their knives. It's just a flipper. It's not assisted. I call it a gents knife. It's a Sunday knife. But I like it. It's pretty long. Um, it measure that blade. It's got a sweeping, almost Japanese look to it. And it's a pretty large blade. Three and an eighth. It feels bigger. But a uh, wonderful knife. Great apple carbon knife. It's a real sticker. Um, I just like the knife, and, and I think it's quality, uh, real quality feel to it. Um, now, value knife. Another Kershaw. I'm just started carrying. I was at the knife, knife works in Sevierville. They had a bunch of blister packs, which they are prone to do. They'll have a, a deal, and they don't always probably have the price, but at $15.99. The Kershaw Nura with brushed stainless scales. It's a frame lock. It is not assisted. It's just a flipper. And it flips good. Um, I just love the feel of this knife and the proportions and shape of it. And the jimping and all that. There's nothing I don't really like about this knife. I don't usually like knives that reduce back here. But it gives this knife a nice look. It's a design by Sankovich, which I don't know that designer real well, but I, I think he's a famous designer, um, Russian designer. But uh, it's got a weird pocket clip that works nice. Um, I don't know that it's reversible. I suspect it might be. I, di I didn't really check into it. I liked it the way it is. Those things don't bother me that much. Um, but when given a choice, I usually go for tip up carry. But anyway, I'm a right handed person. It goes in the pocket, it feels just fine. I pull it out, flip it open, and I'm liking this knife. And I don't know what this coating is, if that's just a baked paint or what it is. 
but it's nice. It takes a great edge. Um, it's just another winner from Kershaw for a value knife. I'm sure it's Chinese knife, but um, this is why I say China's quality is improving, especially when our manufacturers put their mind to it to get it up there and get the quality there and not try to sell you something that's second rate. And I didn't do any adjustments to this knife. It locks up solid, it closes and centers good, opens good. I'm really happy with this knife. There is zero play in that. So, you know, $16 knife. So, it, could America make this knife? I think we could. I, I don't doubt for a minute that we could. I don't know why we don't. You know? We say it's about wages, but I don't, I don't buy that, really, to be honest with you. But, uh, maybe it is. I, I, I don't know. But, nice value knife. And it's a winner for me because it's, it's in agreement with my new decreasing size requirement in a knife. I just don't require over 3 inch blade. And a lot of, you know, I go back to the years I carried po carried lots of case and Boker pocket knives and shreds, and all they ever had, the biggest blade in it, was two and a half. And, you know, as a carpenter and work, worker, tradesman, cabinet maker, that's all they ever needed anyway. You know, why did we get bigger and bigger? Is it to knife fight with? I, I don't know. But I got on that same kick myself, and uh, I'm, I'm slipping back to the old sizes that make more sense for me personally. Some people have big hands too and they, they want more handle and I get that. But uh, you know if, you, if that's the case go to this baby you know the blade isn't as big as it really looks but the handle's huge it's five inches on this rat. And the blade like I said isn't that big the actual cutting edge is three and a quarter three and three eighths and uh, good good soldier's knife. Clip it on his molly gear and off you go. I have other knives, but these are some of my latest uh, favorites. This is an old favorite. Um, uh, my next video I might sneak in at some point is a fixed blade knife a review. Not a review, but just chit chat. Thanks for watching.